Britain Climate Challenge, we have made it to Torness. And right now, we are standing in the middle of a nuclear reactor. That way, reactor one, this way, reactor number two, and below us, the decay area where the fuel is stored before it moves on. Currently, these two reactors are creating enough power for all of the homes in Scotland. Station manager, Tam, has offered to give us a tour around and ask some of the many questions that you've been asking us about nuclear power. So I'll, uh, I'll talk you through what we can see here. The most obvious thing is this big green machine, which is the fueling machine. So this machine, the reason it's so complex is it handles fuel. So it goes, like you say, back and forth. The reactors are there. There's reactor one, there's reactor two, and in the middle we have something called the DK store. So the, this machine is essentially a very advanced crane with shielding around it. So inside this machine, you have tubes. And what happens is the machine has a hoist and it pulls out the old fuel, yep. turns around, puts the new fuel in, the reactors, yep. and that's how we refuel. Then it moves away and it puts the old fuel into yep. the DK store where we let it cool for a period of time. It's cooled by other systems, including CO2, and that's left there for a period of time before we move the fuel to the pond. And there's a way to get to the pond here and that fuel goes into the pond and is stored there until it cools. You can stand right outside the fueling machine, like we're standing now, even closer. You'll get the same dose as you would get outside of here. Okay. No different. So the shielding is very effective and allows the operators who operate this machine to be able to stand there, operate the machine, and get no additional dose. And you've got to remember, this machine is constantly working because both our reactors, currently operational, generating 660 megawatts electrical each. Right now? Right now. So that's enough energy. In a year, for example, 2020, we generated enough energy from Tornas to power all the homes in Scotland, plus a bit left over. So it just shows you the power density of nuclear energy. It's quite miraculous though, and I think that's what probably worries some people. It seems like it's almost impossible that you could get that much power out of such a tiny unit. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned before, for example, how much of a, a unit of fuel would be needed, say, to power a home for a year. How, how, much, how much uranium would you actually need to be able to create that much power? For a whole year, the amount of fuel which is enriched, so it's uranium dioxide that's enriched, about, say, 7 to 8%, it would be the equivalent of a piece of paper to power one home for a year. The weight it's of a piece of paper? The weight of a piece of paper. For example, coal, where you have to burn a lot of coal to provide enough energy for, for one home. And the power of that is comes back to this power density and how we harness the power of nuclear energy in a safe way so that we can generate a lot of energy from very little fuel, which means very little waste that has to be managed afterwards. What interested you personally? You could have done all kinds of things as a career. What made you get into nuclear? There's two things actually for me. One of them is, it's quite, I'm an engineer. I'm also a physicist and I love things that are complex. I've always liked to take things apart and struggle to put them back together. And when I had the opportunity to join nuclear just under 20 years ago, I thought, what, a, what an engineering feat. It really excites me. But the other bit is, actually, I genuinely believe without nuclear, we're really going to struggle to take care of our climate. Nuclear doesn't generate any carbon dioxide. It's reliable and it generates base load 24 7, enough electricity to help stabilize the grid and to provide for the needs of our, of our, of our people. So I'm quite, I feel good about the technology and I also feel good about the, the cause for nuclear energy. And you're happy with the legacy that we are creating in terms of the nuclear waste? So I'll start by saying I understand people asking about the, the waste because when you see the amount of energy we produce and we generate there's always going to be a question about what do we do with our waste so at the moment we've been transporting waste using our flasks since the 1960s using our flasks and you think and the flasks are basically the spent fuel encased in a glass of some kind is it encased in steel in steel okay and um, also has water in it, chlorinated water, 
and it's thick steel, so it's at least 40 centimeters thickness. Yeah. And we've been using them without any incident. And that takes the waste, which if we go back to what we discussed actually, it's not much waste for what we generate, but there is waste. That waste is then safely, has been safely stored in cell field. And what we're now doing is looking for locations for deep geological repositories. So basically digging a hole and putting the waste there. The thing I would say about waste is it's stable, it's managed, we know how to manage it, and it's our responsibility. We've taken that responsibility to manage our waste. So when I talked about the ponds, we've got some of our fuel in ponds. That fuel will get put in these flasks, transported to cell field, stored safely there. And over time that decays and becomes less, less hot. And do you feel that nuclear is a kind of an invention of man or an invention of nature? I think it's a bit of both because these elements exist in nature and everything we've done is we've put different organic and natural elements together to produce what we have, which is a chain reaction now. So when I talk about graphite, it's the moderator, carbon dioxide cools, and then we have uranium, which we get, we mine. So uh, of course we've come in and we've harnessed it in a certain way, but actually the radioactive nature and the energy in these elements exists. We've just harnessed it. So that was an absolutely fascinating tour behind the scenes in a nuclear reactor to see exactly how they turn uranium into vast amounts of power, enough to power the whole of Scotland and what they do with the waste. And it was great to be able to speak to individuals in this industry who are as passionate about solving the climate crisis as many members of the public are. Um, but also to meet people who are ha happy to answer the difficult questions that you've all been asking us. Like, for example, how can they safely manage the creation of that much power? But also, how is the waste handled? And whether and how nuclear is going to play a critical role into our future, the future of move to net zero. If any of you have any further questions you'd like us to ask, then please put them in the comments below. And if you found this story interesting, make sure you follow us on climatechallenge.live, subscribe to us on YouTube and on all the socials. Thank <laughs> you.